Welcome back. We're going to continue our journey through Lent, looking at it through the Celtic spirituality lens. I'm going to read just one verse from Psalm 5. It's actually a favourite verse of mine. And it speaks of some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. It talks about the rhythms of our lives. So we'll read this and then we'll just pause. Every morning you'll hear me at it again. Every morning I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar and watch for fire to descend. Let's just quieten our hearts, slow everything right down, focus on our breathing, and take a moment to really become aware of God being with us, present with us, in us. In fact, it's not so much that he's in us, but that we are in him, lost in him. He is everywhere. And at the beginning of creation, he opened up space inside of himself for the world to be created. So we are in him. Just quieten your heart. Breathe slowly. Breathe deeply. Let all your senses come back together in this moment of recognizing God's presence. Thank you, Lord, for your promised rest. In the middle of our busy, demanding lives, we can be confident that you provide a rest for our souls. And we say with Augustine that we are restless until we find our rest in you. Amen. One of the features of Celtic Christianity, which would have been quite different to Roman Christianity. <clears throat> so in Roman Christianity, it would have had some of the features that we would recognize today, probably some strong stone built buildings, permanence, something that's big and, and uh, recognizable. They would have, it would have had a, a hierarchy, which would have been quite a strong hierarchy. And it would have been based around uh, a bishop or a, or a church and that whole community, the Christian community around that would then, would, would then flourish around and would, would form itself around the orbit of a church. Celtic Christianity was quite different in that um, you may well have had somebody who would have been a bishop, but he would have also been a monk. <clears throat> and rather than having large stone built buildings they would have had uh, probably wooden built structures something much more temporary feeling than that sense of great permanence of a huge towering stone cathedral something that represented the fact that they were on the move and rather than christianity being uh, orbiting around a church then the orbit of, of Christians in, in those in Celtic uh, Christian circles would have been much more around a monastery. So monastic life was very much at the heart of Celtic Christianity. And one of the things that we're going to be looking at this week is very much around the central um, structure or the central skeleton of monastic life. If you signed up for uh, an order, a religious order, back then or today, then you would expect to live a certain way. There would have been a structure that you'd sign up to, and that structure would typically be called a rule of life. I think in modern day, t 
times, especially in Western uh, society, we would kick against the idea of having a whole set of rules that to live by. And maybe a set of rules is a, the wrong way to describe it. It's more of a framework. And it's a framework that's designed to keep you pointing in the direction that you actually want to go in. So rather than it be a set of rules that's set against you, this is more of a framework that's set for you so that it provides the structure that you want to build your life into. Let me just read something from Thomas Merton. <clears throat> the spiritual discipline of living by a rule should not be a weight or burden on one's life. But as Thomas Merton said, rule, a rule is an exterior framework a kind of scaffolding with which one is to help himself build up the spiritual structure of his own life with God. So we're going to be looking at quite a bit about living by a rule of life this week. And as someone who's taken vows with the order of the mustard seed, then I have to say that the last two years have been a period where we've struggled, uh, just in case you're watching this much later and you don't know what time frame I'm talking about, but the last two years have been, the world has been hit by a pandemic and we've been knocked sideways and we didn't really know which way was up and lots of the rhythms of life and the structures of life fell away. I found that as I have a rule of life that I'm signed up to, and a structure, a trellis, if you like, a framework that I'm trying to build my life against so that I don't end up like a rambling rose just flopping everywhere, but I'm actually structured uh, in a certain way. And I've personally found that in the last two years, that rule of life that I, I've committed to has been incredibly helpful. So it's kept me focused on, for, for me, the rule of life would be vows that say, I want to be true to Christ. I want to be kind to people. I want to take the gospel to the nations. And those things then being outworked in uh, practices of prayer and practices of creativity, of justice and mercy, of hospitality, and of mission, and of learning. So I found the structure of those practices to be incredibly helpful as they keep drawing me towards the life that I actually want. A rule of life is really helpful when it comes to making decisions as well. So when things come in, sometimes from left field, and you're not quite sure whether you should do them or not, then I can use my rule of life to decide, does that fit with the life that I want? Okay, then I might do it. Does it fit with the life that I want? No, it doesn't. It doesn't take me any further than the pathway that I'm committed to, or maybe then I won't do it. So it becomes a really freeing and life-giving element in my life, a foundation in my life. Bonhoeffer talked about the church needing desperately a new form of monasticism. Something that goes back to the heart of taking vows, living very seriously, and being determined, as, as Bonhoeffer said, to live out the Sermon on the Mount. And he recognised that if we were to do that, we needed that new form of monasticism, something that would hook us into that. Let's just ponder a moment. Maybe you have a rule of life already, and you just want to think about how precious that is to you. And maybe you don't have a rule of life just now. And you may be thinking... Wow, I've never thought about that. As a lay person, would I want to have a rule of life? Let's just hold that before the Lord for 30 seconds or so. God of all freedom, sometimes I need something to hold on to, 
Sometimes trying to find my way is hard. Help me to find the best way to frame my life with you and help me to find something to aid growth in my faith. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.